Hello my lovely butterfly, it's France. Welcome back for a new journal on Monday. In today's guided journaling, it's all about being grounded. Before diving into things, here's a quick overview of all the products that I've used for today's video. And there's some valuable information that you can find in the description of the video. First of all, the complete listing of these products, but also all the chapters of the video. So if you want to create alongside with me, you can easily pause and jump to the chapter of the next layer. Now is also a good time to subscribe to my channel. A quick and easy way to get grounded when art channeling is to use earthy tones. And of course, vintage papers are super duper handy for that. As per usual, I'm working in my hand-bounded Journal on Monday art channel, which I can lay flat on whatever page it is I want to work on. For our first layer, we're going to glue down some of those pieces of that yummy paper so that we have already a lot going on on the paper that has the right color to get us grounded. And to do that, the best way is to use a gel medium, which can be matte or gloss, whatever it is you have, as long as you apply the medium on the paper as well as on your journal so that everything sticks together nicely.
Once you have built up a structure that you like, you can heat set everything and then either cut or rip the excess away. For the next layer we're going to start to bring everything a little bit more together and we can do that either with gesso or with a modeling paste. Adapt to what it is you have and just apply it in a way that makes you happy. So don't overthink if you're applying it in the right area. Just apply it, go with that flow and enjoy the moment.
we're going to continue to build up that layer that brings everything together. But instead of doing everything with the same medium, we can go in with a contrasting medium. I opted for a white crackle paste so that I will have smooth areas and areas that have a little bit more interest to them. get the best crackles possible, the best thing is to leave it to dry by itself. We're going to start with some color now. And again, if you want to use this moment to get grounded, stick to earthy tones. We're going to start by applying it on the edges and work our way towards the center of the spread. And we're going to play with a dry cloth as well as a wet baby wipe so that we really get a difference in intensity as to how the paint sticks to the surface that we have. So first I'm pushing it in with a dry piece of kitchen roll then I'm going in with a baby wipe and then I'm going back in with paint if I want to intensify it some more and we're going to build that up all the way around the spread. When you're doing this keep in mind that there is no correct way to actually do this. There is however a way that makes you happy and one that doesn't. One that is going with the flow and one that is beating yourself up or getting frustrated because it doesn't look how you would like it to look. So remind yourself that you're here to enjoy that moment and just go with the flow. Don't think about doing this correctly or how I did it. Just do it in a way that makes you happy.
to remind ourselves that this is all about being grounded we're going for a very organic look and nothing says as organic as spraying on some color and having no control as to where it will end up so spray on some earthy tone i opted for more of a rusty kind of color and then move it around with some water then we can just dry it wherever it ends up We're going in with that same color that we used for the edge, but this time we're going to apply it with a sponge over a stencil. Now to make sure that we don't overload it, we're dabbing the sponge off on the workspace before going over the stencil. This will give us a very soft and dreamy finishing touch. If, like me, you would like to repeat this on several areas of your spread, don't forget to clean your stencil every time you want to move it around. You need to clean the back and the front and it will, this will prevent having paint go where you don't want to have it. It is one thing to say that we go with the flow in an organic way and another thing having, well, things that you could actually prevent and that you have control over. you have two options if you like how it looks now you can just leave it that way and skip the next layer if like me would like something a little bit softer you can go in with a lighter color in the exact same way but don't place your stencil in the exact same place just move it up and a little bit to the side before going in with that lighter color if you don't have a lighter color that matches what we've done with a darker color, just use a darker color and mix it with some gesso or some white paint. course we can use some of that paint to add splatters to our spread just spray some water to it mix it up take a paintbrush and then flicker it over the spread It is time to create some contrast, but as we still wanted to have something for grounding, we are keeping that contrast pretty soft. So I opted for a soft blue and I'm using the same kind of stencil only in a smaller format just to have a repeat that is the same but not exactly the same.
So far we've only done things that are actually pretty safe. It is time to be a little less safe. So grab your palette knife, grab some of that paint and just scrape it on here and there on the spread. This will break the repetition of the pattern. It will bring some interest to the eye, make it interesting to look at. And at the same time, it will test your bravery to go wild in a soft way on your spread. And just to keep on building up, we're doing the same thing this time with a card, just to add some lines in that same color. Again, there is no right way to do this. Just apply the paint where you feel like applying it in the intensity that you want to add. As long as it's making you happy, keep on going. If like me you like splatters, that is a good way to use up that leftover paint. So just add some water to it, grab a fine paintbrush, mix it all together and then flicker it over your spread. At this point again you have several options. If like me you want to add a touch of drama, the next color to go in with is black. If you want to create something very calm, very soft, white is the way to go. If you want to have something very vivid, you can go in with a whole bunch of contrasting colors. But like I said, I wanted to add drama. So I'm going in with my palette knife in the same way as we did with the blue paint, but this time in a very, very light handed way. So you can do that same thing, but with the colors of your choice to get the finish that you want to have. It's your journal. You're the one who has to be happy with it in the end.
we're going to give a more finished look to our spread and a good way to do that is to add an edge. I'm going in with black so that it matches the black accents that I have on my spread. Again, you can go in with a more earthy tone like a vintage photo distress ink or even with a color ink. Something that I hear a lot is that building up the focal point can be so hard. Well, I'm going to show you on this spread how easy it can be. I just picked one of my stickers, which already has more than enough going on on there. So I can just stick it down. The only thing that I do like to do is to take away the white edge by applying some ink to it. And then just sticking it down, I can go over it with whatever it is I want. These are mixed media stickers, so they can take it. And now I can just apply the wording that I want to add on that sticker and my focal point is basically done. For my wording I chose one of my big words stamps and I stamped it with embossing ink and then went over it with embossing powder. Now if you don't have all of that material you can just go in with a word that you cut out of a magazine or just stamp directly on the page if you have a stamp that you would like to use for that. And if you don't have any of those stickers like the one that I've used, again, just go through magazines. They have plenty of stuff that you could use and that will already give you enough material to build up your focal point.
Even if our focal point was very simple to build up, it still deserves some love and attention and some way to make it pop from the spread. And an easy way to do that is for me to go back in with black, for you to go back in with one of those colors that you've used, or with white to just make it jump out of the spread. I used a water-soluble charcoal pencil and just went in with a little bit of water to blend it around the wording. If you feel like you're done, you can actually stop here. If like me, you feel like you still have a couple of things to say on that spread, you can add some details. For me, that is just a little bit of stamping on the edges, the numbers, you know how much I like my numbers, and also a couple of circles. Well, you know how much I like my circles. <laughs> so I picked a couple of my stamps, just used some black archival ink and kept it to the edges of the spread to keep it as light and as simple as possible and as organic as possible. As this is a journal which is not that different from a diary, a good thing to keep track of our own story is to actually date our spreads. So that's the last thing that I did for this one. And if you don't have a date stamp, well, just write it on there. Thank you so much for joining me again today. I hope you are feeling grounded. If you're making a spread inspired by this video, feel free to tag me. You'll find all the ways to tag me in the description of this video. A huge shout out to my patrons. You know how much I love you. You're the most amazing butterflies out there. Don't forget to put down a layer a day. See you back next time. Butterfly kisses.